Okay, so this form here is the define browse. This one's fix inspect. You're you're gonna be uh, fix inspect. You're you're updating one record at a time. Okay, so in this application, let's just do this here. Okay, in this application, I'll just make it a little bit make a little bit more sense. Okay, you're gonna the fix inspect. This is the key, right? So the key for the the primary key for the table is the short item short item number and the unit of measure. Everything else we're updating in relation to that primary key. So the height, the length, we're gonna add everything that we're gonna update on the on the screen. Volume, the width, height, length, width, weight. Okay, so now what we could do is this. Okay, let's uh, add a little bit of extra stuff to this. This I can highlight and I can insert a group box. Okay, so I'll just call this, click on this here, dimensions. And I can just move that up. Okay, and this is kind of like all by itself here, so maybe I'll just uh, call it dimensions. <laughs> this group box can just be used to uh, to uh, group common uh, common fields that are related. Okay, so. Select with control and, uh, let's if you if you yeah if you hold control you can hold you can hold control and select multiples. You move them. How do you move them? You can move them by just going up and down arrow. Okay. okay? Up and down arrow like that. Okay. If you hold control and uh, and then you you skip like five five steps instead of one step okay. at a time. Not, not with the mouse. You can move them with the mouse if you want as well. Okay. Or you can also highlight like this. It's a bunch mouse, of them. You want to move them a bit? It's like left, right, up, mouse. down. With the mouse, you could do the same thing. Ah, okay. Okay, but I usually do something like that. And the other thing that's that's useful, let's say you added your fields and you're like all like this. Mm -hmm. You want to align, the, align these all up. You highlight them all by holding control, clicking each one. And then here, you have this menu here, if you look. It's the layout. I, I always have it up here. Okay. And the layout, you can say, look, you can align. Th this is aligning, okay? So you can align left, align right, align. So this I'm just going to align left. It'll align everything left. You can also say, for example, let's say you have this here. And you want to make all these the same size. The, click, the first one you click, is the is the reference point so make these three the same size as the first one i clicked you could say here the width okay so this 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 layout tab here is for both alignment and for for width making widths the same so a lot of times when you're building a form, you're going to do things like this. You're going to like say, okay, weights and dimensions. F first, so usually what I do first is I, I focus on the, the functionality, not so much on the layout. And then at the at towards the end, like I'll, I'll have them grouped together like a little bit, you know, and then towards the end to clean it all up. Then I focus on like, okay, the, 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 like the, you know, the, the visual. So I'll say, okay, make these three, these are all have to do with dimensions, put them all close to each other. Volume is like a result of that. And then weight kind of sits on its own. I want to make sure all of these are aligned. So I highlight them all, left align them all, make all these, let's say the same width, right? So I'll do kind of figure that out at, towards the end. So, The other thing that's that's useful is that right now, for example, this this one here is um, 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this one here is a oversized item. That's a flag that we're 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 putting on for on the unit, right? So the the flag for the oversized item is a is a is a boolean. JDE doesn't have a boolean value. Normally, a boolean in in a programming language, ninety percent of the time you're 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 implementing that visually with a checkbox, right? Checked or not checked, true or false, right? So if I drag this to the screen, okay, not drag, but if I click it and then click the screen, the default is always going to be a text box. You can't switch from a text box in here to a checkbox or to anything else. So if I want to take that business view column, right? Remember, that's a business view column. And I want to make that business view column a checkbox. I first have to insert a checkbox here. So if you have to insert any other f type of control other than a text, you have to insert it first and then associate it with the data item. So if you remember, first thing I can do is insert a checkbox. Okay. The next thing I do is if you remember here to associate this text control with a business view column, it's on the data item tab. It's the same idea here. I'm going to go to the data item tab. Right now, it's not associated with, with anything. I have my business view items or I have, a, I have my data items. It's got to be associated with something. If I do it to, if I associate it with a business view item, uh, column, it's, it's going to automatically take the JDE functionality and automatically save for me, right? If I associate it with a data item, then I have to program the code to do any of the saving if it needs to be persisted or, or whatnot after. So I'm going to associate it with oversized item from the business view items, right? And you see that here now. And now that becomes not available to me anymore over here to select. Okay. So, and it, it also changed the description to the default in the data dictionary, right? If you remember in the data dictionary, we called the oversized item that you created. Probably call it F55 O V R ah, five oversized item. Okay, so it's taking this. Okay, so now that because JDE doesn't have a, a boolean, right? So J, this could be this is always booleans and JDE is are always implemented as character fields. Okay, and you choose as a programmer, is it a one or a zero? Is it a yes or a no? Is it a, it can be anything you want. It could be a five and a six if you want it to be. Okay, usually it's a one or a zero or a yes or a no. Okay, so you choose right away how you want that to be implemented. And when you have a checkbox field, you have over here a value. What's the value when this thing is checked? What's the value when this thing is unchecked? The default is always a one and a zero. If I wanted to, in my in my code program, to a yes and a no, I could change this to a Y and an N if I wanted to. I use both, Y and N and 1 and 0. Okay, so now, when you, everywhere you're reading this thing, everywhere, including the C-sharp program, for example, they got to be consistent, right? So you choose right away, how is this field going to react, going to act? Is it a one or a zero or a yes or a no? You choose one or a zero. Well, you got to program your C sharp for a one is a true, a zero is a false. Any other program that you build to that, that includes that data item in this table, you need to program it with the with the with the knowledge that a one is a true and a zero is a false. Okay, so that's adding that. And you know what? I'm just going to remove this for now. Let's just do this for now. Okay. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to run this thing. Okay. So let's take, for example, 1004. Ah, 1004. 
time. Why am I? We have some code in there that's preventing me from. We were overriding the um, this QBE line here. Because in the other demo that I showed okay. you, when we clicked find, we said set this equal to some value that we had over here. You deleted the value over here, okay? But you didn't delete the code that referenced that. And actually, let me show you something here. Actually, this is a good opportunity to show you what we were doing before we were doing this. Oh, so we're doing this. We took this field and we put it over here. And we said on find, set the the QBE line product group equal to the form control. So we were what we were doing, we were saying take the value here on find and place it here on find. That's what we did in the in the pr in the previous demo, okay? And and it was working for us, right? So when we when we did when we said C N G over here, you click find, it would put it over here, and it would find. Yeah. Then what you did is you said, okay, I don't need this. It was just for a demo. Delete it. Yeah. You deleted it. The problem there is your code still references that. Okay. There's a way you can validate your code. If you do validate event rules. Validate event rules is going to pop up um, an, a log if so there's problems. So it's telling me it's unable to assign a data structure. This is the event find. Sorry, this is the form find browse. It happens when you clicked a button. Okay. Um, and this is the text. This is the code that's not working. So you have to go to this control, control 15. Okay. And I won't get into it now, but you're going to go to the find button. And you see here that says QC progress equal to it's missing name. That's because it's this this code is no longer valid. So how do you know from 15 to go here? Uh, I'll get into that in another one. Yeah. Okay, so I just removed the code because it's no longer relevant. And you saw it messed with my stuff, right? It messed with, with how it was reacting. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I really wanted to show you. Let's say 1004. Find. And I'm going to go into here. Okay, and now I have this, which is my key I cannot change. And this I can change whatever I want. Okay, so can set this to five, let's say. And look, it's going all over the place. See that? Tabbing down. Yeah. It's going from there to there, back up there, down there. So you want to set the tab sequencing. <laughs> okay. So usually, again, I usually do this towards the end. I get my code working, and then I worry about the aesthetics. So let's say I want to say that's an oversized item. Click OK. So here. You see everything got updated automatically, right? JD is managing the saving of that for me. Um, so let's fix a few a few things with the aesthetics. One, a user is not going to work with short item number. They're going to work with item number. Two, the, the um, tab sequencing is not good. And three, when I'm in here, I still don't care about the short item number. I care about the second item number. That's what the user wants to see. Okay, so we'll we'll fix that. What we'll do here is because the find browse form, okay, it's called find browse. We'll call that work with item. Okay, so the find is usually 
it's a JDE standard, doesn't have to be this way. It's usually work with. So you're working with records. Then the fix inspect is usually named like item weight and dimension provisions. This is a JDE standard. So item weights and dimensions, you put a work with in front of it when when you're when you're browsing for the record. When you're actually revising the record, whether it be an add or an edit, because again, this fix inspect form is going to be for an add or for an edit. Um, so we're going to say item. So it's the same thing. Item weights and dimensions is the is the concept that we're kind of like dealing with, and then you add a revisions towards the end. Again, that's not necessary. It's just a JDE. GD standard. So tab sequencing is super easy. We're going to go in here. We're going to say layout, tab sequencing. Okay. And then we just click. That's one. That's two. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. And then you go back here, layout, tab sequence. That's set. Okay. If you add another column in, in, in between, let's say you added this one. You say, oh, I want to go. I want it to go in the middle over here. And you want this, to, you don't have to start from scratch again and do it like, because sometimes you have big forms, right? And you don't want to click every single one, right? So there's also update tab sequence. So then you, you, you click that, you see the sequencing, and you see that this one's like 28. It's way out there. So I'm going to make this one a 6. So if I right-click that, okay, it says, what sequence do you want to make it? 6. So it'll update everything after. 7, 8, 9, it'll update everything. So I just inserted it in between. And you click this again, update that sequence. So now I'm just going to remove that. My sequencing is good. I'm going to. Well, if you look, it's going to be, yeah, it's at five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay, so that's my tab sequencing problem. Now, for the for the for the browsing form. The reason we, one of the reasons why we joined the table to the F4101 was because the second item number, if you, if you look at the, the table, the F5541002, everything's referenced by short item number. It doesn't store the second item number, which is our, our item number that we're, users work with. So if we want to be able to see that on that screen, we have two ways of showing it on that screen. One way, okay is by adding it from the data data dictionary litm is the is the data item for second item number and adding it there okay second item number and then coding coding for it so what we would do would be add an event to when the record is fetched when this and, and when you're thinking grid record is fetched you're thinking one row it gets triggered for every row. Good night. So when the grid record gets fetched, go and grab me the second item number using the short item number. Okay. So if you look now, if I run this application, that data item is not going to be populated with anything, right? Because it's from a data dictionary. It's not from the business view. It's got nothing in it. So in JDE, it's very data centric, meaning that you got to go straight to the table all the time. So you want to get data, you go to the table. And JDE makes that very easy. So what you do is your grid record is fetched. I am going to get some data. It's called table input output. Table input output allows you to insert, update, delete, all that table operations that you're going to do is going to be in here. Okay. If you're fetching one record by the primary key, or if you're fetching one record period, you can use fetch single. That's the one I'm going to show for now. Okay. This is a little bit more advanced to select, but fetch single is going to go and do a select based on a primary key. Okay. So I'm going to go fetch single. The data that I want to get 
is in F4101. It's the item master. So these are the, you're going to have to learn through time. And in the item master, the key to the item master is the short item number. See? And you see the key is in a star. So all the fields that are part of the key are going to be starred. Okay? So if I want to grab this value based on this value, I'm going to say, basically what you do here is you build your where clause for the key and your and your and your retrieval clause for the rest so basically wherever there's a star i'm going to pass some data to that the data that i'm going to pass if you remember on in grid record is fetched i have access to this data as a business column because it's loading for every single record the BC short item number is the one that it's about to write. So in the grid record is fetched. I'm going to do a table input output. Fetch single in F4101. And I'm going to assign it the business view column short item number. Now which one I pick doesn't really matter in this particular scenario because it's a join. It's an inner join. And it's joining based on that column. So they're the same, it's the same value in both of those. So you see here, equal sign. Here now, what I'm going to do is take, what I want to do is take the value that's returned and store it in the grid column, second item number. So you see what's what's happening here visually. You're doing your where based on the on the short item number. And you're the date you're gonna get all of this data back, but you're not gonna use any of it. You're only going to use the ones that you assign over here. So this one I'm assigning directly to the grid column. So I'm doing a fetch single for every single record. So the impact of that, okay, is JDE is going to do, I'll run that. JDE is going to do one query to get you the results of everything. This. Everything before the second item number. Okay. It's going to return you as many records as are in the table. For every single record that you're about to write, do another query into the database record by record. Okay? So it's basically saying, okay, I got this record. I'm about to write it to the I'm about to write it. Go and go and do a select in 4101. Grab me the item number, plug it here. Next record. Go and do a select. So you're so it, basically you want to try and limit that. You want to try and limit fetching as, as much as possible. One, for performance reasons. And two, I can't search by that right now. Because it's not in my business view. That's why when we designed this first initial screen, we designed it with, well, it's got a short item number in there, but I want to search by all the attributes related to the item. So join the item master. And when you join the item master, now I can... I can I can, instead of fetching the data, it's going to do an inner join and it's going to be one query with an inner join in the, and it's going to put the values in there and they'll be searchable. So you're going to get better performance, better usability for, for a user. So this is inevitable. You're going to do this and you're going to do it a lot. Fetching. It's called fetching. They call it fetch single or whatever. You're going to do it a lot because you're limited to a certain amount of tables in JDE. So there are scenarios where you're going to use it and you're going to use it a lot. But the preferred method, which you want to try and do when you build the screen, is, is think about how is a user going to interact with this screen and and optimize your business view to, or, or make a business view to optimize the performance and the usability of your screen. Then everything else is secondary. So this is why we joined the table. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that column. Now when I delete that column, Again, I just invalidated my SQ, my my code. So if I save that and I validate my event rules, my fetch single on my grid record fetched is invalidated. Okay, so I have to know that I got to go back in here and either change this to something else or if I don't need it anymore, just delete it. Okay, so I don't, I'm going to show that I don't need it because I have it already in my view here. Second item number. So I'm just going to take second item number in there. And that's it. How do you move it? If you want to move it, you can you can 
do two things. You can highlight the column, hold control, and you can move left by left and right arrow. Or you can go double click on your grid. And here you got, you got uh, columns. And you can go up and down moving it that way. Okay. So let's say I'm going to take that. I'm going to control and I'm going to move it all the way to the beginning. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this column here. And I'm going to make it invisible. So the user doesn't see it. Because the user doesn't care about the short end number. So I'm just going to remove it like that. So now, if I run this application, it's more, it's a little bit more user friendly because now a user sees the second item number, not the short item number. But when I double click on this, the information that I pass to the other screen has to be the short item number because that's the key. Okay, so I can't simply take this column here, uh, this column here, short item number can't take that and just delete it. Why? Because when I call the select button, it's passing the grid column short item number, right? <laughs> okay. And if you, if I delete that column, I don't, ha I no longer have a reference point. So that's why normally what you do when you have, when you have this type of scenario is you, you, you add it to the grid but you just hide it. You hide it so a user doesn't see it. So you make it visible. Still available to me. Now in my in my grid columns, I'm able to reference the selected short item number all the time. So that's step one. Step two, that's, that's now I've made this screen better. So now if I run this, this screen's better. And I can search by that. I can search by this short item number now. Say A V dash eight one three. So these are these are things that users know. Okay. The other thing that I could search by is anything in my business view. Anything. So the business the F forty one oh one, we put we put all the columns we wanted to be able to search by. So all we have to do is add it to the grid. Buyer. Address number, that's it. So now I have all those there. If I save that and I preview, a user will now be able to say, show me all my items, okay? A buyer goes in, the item, okay? If you look at the item master, the item master is linked to a buyer number, okay? So there's a field on the item master that says, who's the buyer for this item? So that's it. It's a buyer number. So they know their numbers. So every time an item is created, it's assigned to a specific buyer who does the buying for that item. Because we've joined now to the item master, we could search based on the buyer number. So a buyer can come in here and say, show me my items only. So they all know their buyer number. Let's say 2910 is their buyer number. And I could filter this list now to show me only my items. I could filter it down even more by brand if I want to. I want to see, I don't know, let's say Sure or ADJ or no, let's say Sure. That's a brand that we carry. Show me all the Sure item numbers and the weights and the dimensions for only the Sure item numbers. One extra thing I could do here now is add these. Okay, are this and this are UDC backed. So if I click on there, you're going to see a UDC come up. Select user defined code. This one is 41S1. Remember, it's all the same table in the background. Remember, there's those, those, there's those two. There's the system code and the uh, record type that define the list that is available to each of these. So this one, for example, is 41S1. This one here is 41S3. Okay, and you see the list gets changed. Same table. I'm, I'm querying the same table in the background. It's just different record types. Okay. So because these are UDC backed, a lot of times we want to show you for UDCs the corresponding description for the code. So to do that, because UDCs are all over in JD, 
super simple. You highlight the column. You, you highlight the. You select the column. You edit associate description. JDE will know automatically how to get that description because it's a user's fine code. It's built in to the developing environment. Same thing for here. You take the product brand. You do the same thing. Associate description. Now I'm going to rerun that. And you're going to see this a lot in JDE. That now I can see this is custom CNG. What the heck is it? Well, it's custom installation. Okay. You can never search by the description. Okay. So users, they kind of get used to that. But at least you can see it. So I can search by the code. And if I want to search by the description, I have to like open the flashlight and I see this like, oh, musical instruments. Select it. It puts MIG there. And then I can search only the MIG stuff. So that just shows you that I don't have to code to get the UDC description. It's in another table. I don't have to code for that. It's built straight into JDE uh, because JDE makes heavy use of these UDCs. Another thing that I could do is I could display the description for the buyer number. So if you look at the buyer number in the data dictionary, There are it's uh, I think it's this one here. This one here. There's a specific edit rule associated with this with this thing. Okay, this is a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to get into it right now, but this edit rule is is read by JD Edwards. Okay, and that ed rule. Uh, um, rule is basically saying validate that the, whatever whatever value you put in here exists in our address book so basically in jde do i have another one open here JDE, your address book contains entries for any type of uh, person or entity or 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 client or so basically your address book would would hold would hold a record for your a client for a customer a record for a supplier employees buyers even facilities. They're all in here. It's all separated by what's called the search type. So for example, C is all my customers. Those are all my customers. Uh, VS are all my suppliers. Okay. This again is a user defined field. If I click on here, it's it's a user, it's, it's all UDC. So it's, this is UDC 01ST. These are the, the we've defined the different types of address book records that we can have. Okay, so our buyers are set up with BY. So every time somebody comes in, they have a specific buyer record. These are our buyers that we have in the company. So remember I said 2910, 2909. Those are the, the numbers that get assigned to the items. And this this flag here, this edit rule flag, is column in address book. Is some validation because you know where JDE doesn't have the whole the concept of um, foreign keys and all that stuff. This is what's kind of behind the scenes making an integrity. So it's making sure that whatever value you put in for the buyer exists. In the data, in in the item, in the um, in the address book. Okay, so JDE. Anyway, my point with that is that JDE is able to read that. Okay, and so a lot of the address-related fields or aliases will have the same edit rule, 
And that edit rule makes it possible for you to even associate a description, okay, with an address book entry. And it'll go and grab, if you look at the address book, the alpha name related to that. So it's not a UDC, but it's the same concept, but through an address book. Okay, because address book is master data that you're going to see everywhere in JDE. So, if you have a buyer, they got to be set up in the address book. You got a planner, they got to be set up in an address book. You got a customer, they got to be set up in an address book. So, customer number, ship to number, bill to number, address book number, buyer number, all those things, what you'll see in the data dictionary will have that edit rule associated with them, which basically is telling JDE. How JDE reads that and knows how to get the description. So I don't have to code for that description. So you'll see. See? Automatically adds the person's name. This associate description can be used for both those scenarios. Address book and UDCs. Okay, so you'll get to know the data items that are address book backed and which ones are UDC backed. Um, so that's it. So now this screen here that we've just developed is almost there. The only part that's missing is maybe a bunch of filters up here for the common stuff that someone's going to filter. So I can tell you this is just going to be by experience, by looking at requirements, because you're going to go and you're going to meet with the users and you're going to, they're going to tell you, oh, well, I search by this most often. And you're going to get to know as you develop the things that are important for users to search by and all that stuff. Okay, I can tell you right now that people, they search by a lot, especially big lists. I want to see my items and my items only. I want to be able to filter by brand. I want to be able to exclude parts. All that type of thing. So in here, the common stuff for sure is going to be buyer number. So I'm already able to filter just by the QBE line, right? By all of those things. But the common stuff I add up here as well. So I'll add buyer here. And again, same thing. Here, to make that a filter, I got to double click, go to the filter, equals. Now, I'm not going to put a wildcard. Okay, I'll just show you the difference. When I run that, if I do a find, there's nothing in here, but it's searching everything. So in JDE, normally, it's a star, right? But now it's telling me that's the, 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 that value doesn't exist in the address book. Star doesn't exist in the address book. So, so normally, what you normally do when you want to search all records is you have that wildcard display checked. So what that does is then allow you to put a star in there to show you that I'm searching everything. So it'll put a star there. You see star? And star searches everything. You put another value other than star, it's going to search that other value. And if you blank it out, it puts a star. Okay? So that's usually what you do for most kind of fields that you're filtering. And again, what you're going to do is also, if let's say I say 29, 20, I want to, I want to do 29, 10. The same concept applies here. Who is 29, 10? I don't see a description of here. I have to go over here to see who it is. So you can also associate a description with a, this is I'm associating a description with a grid control. This is going to associate a description with a form control. Same same idea. I double click, sorry. I click, edit, associate description, tell it where I want to place it, and that's it. So now JDE will automatically okay, manage the display of this for you. You don't have to code for it. Star is nothing. I choose 2910, a tab, it's going to show me right beside. Okay, if I if I remove it, tab down, removes it. Manages all, it's going to doing it all before you. You, have to, you don't have to code anything. Okay, 
So let's say I add buyer number and I add, uh, let's say, brand. Brand, you'll get to know, is reporting code 3. So here's an example of where I would go like this. Take that, take that, make them the same size. Left align them. Actually, I would take this one first, this one second, left align. Edit, associate description, put it here, take this, make it a filter. Now I can search by this and this up here as a filter. Okay, and those are the common stuff. And the difference between a QBE line, okay, and a regular line is that a QBE line, you can't do something like star CN star. I can't search like that. So let's say star C star. I can't search that way. Can I? I never used to be able to start. I can. I was never able to do that before. That's that's a new a new to a, a new tools release. Normally, stars were not able to be able to search that way. Whereas these you can. You can say like C A star. And it would show me all the canary. Anything that started with CA. Never used to be able to do it here. But I guess you can now. I learned I learned something today. Um that's that must be new to a new tools release because older tools release it was exact as it uh, showed up there. So put the common the common filters up here. Everything else is filterable by here. Let's say you wanted to, for whatever reason, for performance reasons, okay? You wanted to um, say, I don't want them to be able to search by this because it's a super slow search. There's no index on the table, blah, 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 whatever. For whatever reason, you want to remove the ability to search by this. You can do that just by selecting the column. Selecting the column. And you say disable QBE. Disabling the QBE is now going to make the column non-searchable. Because QBE is the query by example, and you're disabling it for that one column. I can't search that anymore. So that would be it for this screen. Last thing we're going to do, oh shit, six. Last thing we're going to do is fix this screen. This screen is going to be um, same idea. So now if I run the application, this screen here, I don't see the short item number because I don't care about it. Sorry, I'll go back here. I don't care about it. But when I click into it, I lose like, oh, you forget where you are. You want to you see like what item am I updating? Mm -hmm. they, don't know, they don't know their short item numbers, right? They know their second item numbers. Yeah. So the difference between this business view and this business view is this business view, because it's a fine browse, can, you can have table joints. Right. This business view is your updating, so your one, one table only. Exactly. So this one here, you're going to fetch the data. You're going to hide this information and you're going to fetch the data. Okay. So to fetch the data, it doesn't, the, the item, the short item number, sorry, the second item number doesn't exist in my view. If it exists in my view, I can just show it. I can just put it there. But this one doesn't exist in my view. So I'm going to take a data item LITM. I'm going to bring that here. Second item number. Okay. I'm going to hide this. Hide this. Okay. I'm going to put this like this. And I am going to fetch the data. And I'm going to fetch the data when the screen opens. So I'm not going to get into the event processing model yet, but most of the, of the code that I do on, on initialization of a screen is in the post dialog is initialized, not in the dialog is initialized. And I'll explain the difference another time. For now, post.leg is initialized. Now I'm going to do a table input output, fetch single, 
41 f 4101 is my item master what short item what data contains my column i can work with two pieces of information here the one that i'm going to just work with now is the form interconnect so remember that the data that gets passed to me gets passed to me in as a as part of a data structure right this this one here When I click select, I'm passing the short item number. So the, the the application accepts these parameters as form interconnects. So in here, I have a form interconnect. So I'm going to use the the short item number that was given to me. And I'm going to, again, fetch single by the key. And every other column, I'm returning the value to. So I'm going to take, take the, the result of this fetch and place the result, second item number, in the second item number field. Okay. So that's step one. Now, if I run this, you're going to see that this field is going to be editable, which is not good. Uh. Because it's it's like it's my key, right? So if I go in here, I don't want a user to be able to play with this. Yes. All right? So JDE manages the short end number and the unit of measure because it's part of the key, it's part of the business view. But because I'm adding a field and I'm fetching it, JDE doesn't know what to, to do that so we have to highlight or select the field and make it read only either read only or disabled one of the two okay and the difference is just i'll show you read only there used to be a difference i don't know if there's still a difference on the i think there still is a difference in the web version Read only looks like this, and you're able to select the data. Maybe disabled is the same now. In, in the fat client, they used to be different. Read only, you're able to select the content within. Disabled, you couldn't even select. Like you tried to select the record, and you couldn't copy even the data. I don't know if it's the same on the web. Let's see. Oh, see on the web, it's exactly the same. Disable and read only. Implemented on the web, probably because of web um, um, limitations, is implemented the same way. 99.9% .9 of the time, actually pretty much all the time, I'm just using read only. Doesn't I guess it doesn't really matter on the because uh, now we're web based now. So I make it read only, and I'll show you another ex like. Uh, Maybe five more minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab some other pieces of information just to display it on this screen from the item master. I'm going to grab the buyer. Let's say B U Y R is the buyer. Just to show you that I'm able to like grab more than one piece of information. I'm going to grab the buyer and associate the description with the buyer. Okay. And what I'm going to do, if I double click on this form, it's if I look at the options, it's for 800 by 600 is the default screen. So that's the guides you see here. See those blue guides? Yes. That is an 800 by 600 screen. It doesn't give you a lot. Even a thousand by a thousand twenty-four by 768 is like older monitors. So usually I choose a thousand twenty-four by 768. And I make my grid a lot bigger. So this one gives me room for 1,064 by 768. 
I can make that bigger. Okay, so now you can see I can fit that on my screen before it was going off off the screen. Um, if your application is huge, because we have a lot more than a thousand twenty four by seven sixty, we have like HD monitors pretty much everywhere. You can make this like even larger. You can even like go like that, and it'll still fit on one screen. Okay, this is just a guide. It's just a guide. Okay, so I'm gonna take that. And I'm going to fetch, on top of fetching the second item number, I'm going to fetch the buyer associated with it. This is an example. It's probably not something I would do in real life, but just as an example, in my post dialogue initialized, just to show you that I don't have to, I'm not just fetching one, I'm going to fetch the buyer. So I'm going to look for in the table, there's a buyer. Okay, so I see buyer, it's a column name. And I see B-U-I-R is, is the alias. Now, if you look at the description, description, and column name. Column name is this. Description is this. How, you dis how it displays on screen is this. So this up here, description and data item, is how you see it in your code. Row description and column title is how you see it on screen. So I'm gonna look for the buyer and I'm gonna say, take the data and put it into the buyer column. So now you see I'm my where is there, the equals. So it's saying select star from F4101 where the short item number which is I M I T M is equal to whatever values in that variable so it's going to be whatever pass is passed to me take the result that I get back I'm going to get one record back so I know that and I'm using a fetch single because I know that so take the result I get back and plug in the second item number that I get back plug it in the form control field the buyer number that I get back in this column, plug it in the form control buyer field. Okay, so it's kind of you could plug you could plug it in anywhere you want. Okay, so I could plug it in. For example, check 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 this out. Okay, I'm gonna create myself my own internal variable. It doesn't display on screen. Okay, B U Y R. I'm gonna use buyer. Okay, you're going to see in my fetch single, I can fetch that buyer to a form control, directly to a form control, or I can go to my variable. Okay, that's not going to display on screen, that variable, but it's a variable I can use now. I can use that to go grab some other data, or maybe I'm going to do some math if it's a number, well, right? Or I can pass the variable to another form or to whatever, like, like it's a variable that I have available to me. The types of variables you have, okay, it's kind of, my, my, my things are kind of all over the place. <laughs> the types of variable you'll have are event and form for, a, for, a, um, for an interactive application. Event is scoped to the event, which is, means this. It means that I don't see that variable anywhere other than this event. It's like it's like uh, when you define a variable inside of a function in C sharp, you only see the variable inside of that function. Scope. The scope of that is, is in, inside that function. Well, the scope is to this event. Okay. So every time this thing gets reinitialized, re re every time that event gets called, the variable gets reinitialized. Whereas form, okay, a form variable is available to me in the entire form. This entire form. In any event, okay. So sometimes you want glo more global variables. You put them in form variables. Sometimes you want only scopes to an event. Okay. In this particular example, I'm going to keep it scoped to the event. And you're going to see here, I'm fetching it into a variable. And now I could say, wow, take that, take whatever's in that variable. 
take what's in that variable and assign it to the for, form control. Okay, so I'm just, doing this is the same end result. Gotcha. Okay, but doing it this way is just one step less. I'm going directly in, like take the data and put it directly into the form control. Here I'm saying take the data, put it into a variable, then take the variable and put it into the form control. Ultimately, if you put something in a form control, that's what gets displayed on the screen. Okay, last thing I'm going to do, make this read only. Because it's not something we're editing, it's just, a, it's, it's just something I'm showing to somebody. No. This one here. So double click, fetches this, fetches the buyer. I because I associated the description, will automatically show me the description. It's not editable. These are the things you can edit. So then I added that. And whatever I edit, let's say three, save. Now when you save in JDE, it's not just saving what you've changed. It's taking it and resaving everything. Okay? So it's saving this, 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 and this. Oh, the, whole record. the whole record is getting saved. It's not just saying update only the height because you've only changed the height. It's just it's it's taking whatever's here and saying update. Oh, okay. Okay. So I say I put a three there. I've just updated this to a three. Which one did I update? I don't remember which one I updated. Here, let's take a v a v dash eight one three. The height, I'm going to put four. So if I redo a find, something is wrong here. What the heck? We got to check that. Oh, did we, uh, we must have have some code in here. Yeah, here. Update record before we're, we're updating the, <laughs> that was for a demo that we did. <laughs> So it gets updated to a four and now it's more user friendly. And you see to do this, very, very, very little code. I didn't have to design my screen. The screens are already designed. I didn't have to write any SQLs or anything. All I'm doing is, is fetching a bit of data here. That's it. JD is taking care of grabbing the data and display it on the screen. JD is taking care of taking this data, passing it to this form, having this form query the database for that one record. DDB, JDE is taking care of when I click the OK button, take that data, knows what the primary key is, save it automatically for me. Next one I'll do is the add button. Okay.